Hi everyone, it's Sam from SiteMate. A site instruction is a formal instruction uh, for the execution of works usually sent from the head contractor to subcontractors to clarify contractual documents. Um, so in this video, we're gonna look at how easy it is to set up your site instructions um, in a way that you know, they can be managed professionally using Dash Pivot. So I've already got a site instruction and approvals template set up inside of Dash Pivot. You can see that it's been set up as a workflow meaning that it moves between different people for sign off, you know, it's, there's a process to it. And ultimately we wanna move all of these items to the closed column. So if I add a new instruction, it'll get set up here. And then as we sign it off by the, the, the relevant people, we'll move it to this closed section. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a new instruction. You'll see that we've got the template set up already. I can come in here and add the details of this particular instruction. Maybe it's from the client, maybe it's, um, I don't know, uh, 1400 uh, mil fence needs to be 1800. You know, it's a change in scope. The reason for it might be uh, privacy concerns from surrounding neighbors, something like this. Obviously you can add as much detail as is required. Uh, we've got a, a photos field in here, so I can click on add photos. I can link in some of the photos that we've got already. So maybe I wanna add this particular photo. You can see that that's now been linked to this form. And a quick note on this, you know, if you're filling out this form on the mobile app, you can actually take the photo, you know, uh, from site uh, as you are filling out this form. So there's no need to reference it later. You can just do it on the on the fly. Um, and of course we can, we can uh, continue through this form. We can add, you know, relevant information for what Subby needs to action it. Um, you know, resources required, things like that. We've got a series of questions, and you know, we just need to follow the the process that we have set up. You'll notice that, you know, if I save that form now, it's sitting in this first column. You know, the goal is to move it to, you know, uh, the closed column, and the way that we do that is with what we call approval signatures. You'll see that if I scroll down, we have this signature here that says, you know, engineer or foreman sign off. So the engineer or foreman needs to click sign here and stamp um, basically their signature with the, with the time and date. You can see that there. Now, if I save it, you'll see that it's moved to this next column. Um, and if I open up the form again, you know, now this, this next approval signature is enabled. Um, the funny thing about approval signatures is that you need to do them in order. So you can see that this one is disabled. I can't do it yet because this one hasn't been signed off. So um, that's basically how the approval signatures works. The other um, useful feature inside of the workflow is the ability to set up notifications to get sent to specific people um, when forms are created or when they move from one column to the next. Let's say that in this example, we want to notify the project manager you know, after this is signed off by the SPE, once it moves to this column, we wanna notify the project manager via email. We can do that by clicking this eyeball here um, and we can select, you know, who within this team we wanna notify. Let's say it's Josh. Let's click on Josh and you can see that now he's, he's going to receive a notification email um, if I go ahead and sign this off. So I'll, I'll go ahead and scroll down to the next section Obviously you need to fill out this section first, but um, if I just do this quickly and I hit sign, I'll save that and you can see that it's moved to this next column. Josh will now have received an email. He can click on the link in that email. It will open up this form specifically um, and he can sign it off and move it to the closed column. Um, a couple of useful features to know specifically for site instructions. Um, if you need to send it to uh, a, a particular party, you know, we can open up the form. We've got some options at the top here. You can download it uh, as a PDF. Maybe if you need to print, um, you can send it as a PDF to somebody if you need to. You can click on that button. They don't need to have a Dash Pivot account. Um, you know, it could be anyone, um, uh, anyone's email address. I can plug that in there and, and send them an email. They'll receive a PDF version of this uh, form that's been set up. Um, the only other thing that I would say is that you know, once you've got more records in here, it might look something a little more like this. Um, the register view is always handy because, um, you know, you can, you're just viewing the information that's recorded inside of each form uh, in a register format, similar to Excel. 
Um, and you can start to apply uh, filters and things, you know, if you want to look at, you know, specific subcontractors as an example, or specific types of instructions. Um, we've got some fil uh, filters built in, uh, which you can use to find information uh, a lot quicker. Uh, that pretty much sums up this video. If you want to get started with this particular template, which I just ran through, uh, you can do that by clicking Add New Template and choosing from our free public template library. Otherwise, you can set up your own from scratch if you'd like. Of course, any that you add from the public library, you can edit later on. And that's really how you can organize your site instructions with Dash Pivot.